Was Jesus based on the Persian god Mithra? Christ Mithras will claim Jesus never existed and was just a copy of Mithra because Mithra was born of a virgin on December 25th. He was a traveling teacher and performed miracles. He had 12 disciples. He sacrificed himself for world peace, was buried in a tomb and resurrected three days later on Easter morning. His followers were promised immortality. He was called the Good Shepherd, Savior, Redeemer, the Way, the Truth, and the Light. His Holy Day was Sunday, and his followers partook in the Lord's Supper every week. So do we have proof that Jesus was a mythic copy of the god Mithra? Well, for that to even be remotely true, some of this nonsense would have to be factually correct. And in fact, it is not. First, there are actually three different versions of Mithra, and none of them match Christianity. Most who try to claim this tend to think the Mithra of the Roman cult is where Jesus came from. But this mystical religion surrounding Mithra didn't leave any writings behind for us to know what they believe. So we have to piece most of it together from secondhand sources and inscriptions. First, it is unlikely Mithra was born of a virgin. All sources indicate the Roman version was born out of a rock. This is also confirmed by Commodianus. In other versions, Mithra was created as an adult by Ahura Mazda. And even in Persian versions of Mithra, there is no indication from inscriptions he was born of a virgin. As for December 25th, Roger Beck states this is just absolutely wrong. In truth, the only evidence for it is the celebration of the birthday of Invictus on that dating calendar of Philo Calus. Invictus is of course Sol Invictus, Aurelian's sun god. It does not follow that a different, earlier and unofficial sun god, Sol Invictus Mithras, was necessarily, or even probably, born on that day too. There is no evidence Mithra was ever called a traveling teacher. As for performing miracles, such a task was said of just about every deity and is way too general to form any parallel. There is no evidence Mithra had 12 disciples in any version. In the Persian or Iranian version, he had one companion, who was Varuna. And in the Roman version, he only had two companions. The idea that Mithra had 12 disciples is taken from this image of Mithra, slaying of the bull, where he is surrounded by 12 figures. But these are not disciples. They are the signs of the zodiac. Plus this inscription postdates Christianity, so it cannot mean any type of dependency. There is no evidence Mithra sacrificed himself for world peace, and Christ Mithras have yet to provide any evidence. The closest one can get is the story of Mithra slaying the bull, but that doesn't compare to Christianity at all. As for his burial and resurrection, this is just an outright modern lie. There is no indication in any version of Mithra that he died, let alone was buried and resurrected. The closest one can get is a piece of graffiti dated to after 200 AD, which reads, And us too you save by spilling the eternal blood. However, every Mithric scholar notes this refers to the spilling of the bull's blood, not his own. The Mithric cult probably did promise their followers immortality, because that was customary in almost all religions, and is way too general to force any type of real parallel. But even if this is true, we still aren't really sure, because again, we simply don't have any Mithric writings left for us. Roger Beck even suspects that in the Mithric religion, there was never any specific ritual about the soul's journey after death. Mithric was never called the Good Shepherd, Savior, Redeemer, the Way, the Truth, and the Light, or any common title that is applied to Christ. These are just outright lies. Now it is true that Mithra's holy day was on Sunday, but given there are only seven days in a week, and the first day of the week was significant for many cultures, it is hardly evidence of borrowing. Plus, we should also note, most of our knowledge on the Mithra cult comes from after the time of Jesus. So if there was borrowing, it is more probable it was the other way around, meaning the Mithra cult stole from Christians. Michelle Zalzman even notes the Mithra cult use of Sunday postdates the New Testament. Finally, there is no evidence of a Lord's Supper in the Mithra cult. Any reference to this comes from very late medieval texts that cannot be trusted. So since that is the case, there is no evidence Jesus was just a myth based on Mithra.